with God of War, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, as well as Elden Ring landing at the top of the most anticipated games that are coming to the PC in 2022, I've been getting a whole bunch of questions about if the Steam Deck is going to be able to play these AAA games. Well, without rattling the hornet's nest on just how powerful the GPU is going to be, I wanted to talk about some of the tricks that are going to be up the Steam Deck's sleeve come February 2022. Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a great day. Judging by the specs of some of these AAA games that have just hit the market or what's coming to us, man, there's a lot of juice that's needed to play these latest AAA games. God of War requires at least a GTX 960 for a 720p 30fps experience. Halo Infinite needs at least an RX 570 for some 1080p gameplay. Final Fantasy, ouch, it needs an RX 480. Heck, even Cyberpunk, which was released over a year ago, needs at least an RX 470 to run right around 30 FPS at 1080p. Luckily, Elden Ring looks to only need an R9 280, which is an ancient GPU, though they do recommend at least a GTX 970 for their recommended gameplay. Now this might seem like a steep requirement just to get into gameplay, but luckily for the Steam Deck, it is running at a resolution of 1280 by 800 or 720p HD, which is actually a really good benefit for the deck, but there is a bit of a translation gap between what some of these developers are listing and what's actually gonna be played on the Steam Deck. Cause let's be honest guys, not a lot of developers are creating their games for 720p gameplay. So there's gotta be a way to kind of bridge the gap between what we're being told and what we should expect with the Steam Deck. So talking from that standpoint in today's video, are there any special tricks or secret sauce that the Steam Deck has in order to boost our performance? First up is native render resolution scaling. Now this shouldn't be news to anyone. If you've played games over the past four to five years, many games have options within their video menu of allowing you to define the render resolution as well as your output monitor resolution in order to kind of boost our performance from within the game. The benefit of this is if the option is available, it should just work. Granted, you have to work within the limitations of the game. The downside of this is some render engines for some games, they just don't work well and the upscaling looks like garbage. Also, let's not forget that even with the best upscaling technologies, there is a bit of a performance impact. So within the engine, we might not get as much performance improvement as we were hoping to expect. Regardless, if this option is available in your game, there's no special tricks that are required. And for the Steam Deck, as well as with Linux, it's, we don't need to do any additional work. So the next feature is actually built into SteamOS 3 and that is GameScope. It's the compositor for the operating system. And what it does is it takes your rendered image and upscales it to your target output resolution. All you have to do is define that internal resolution, define your monitor's output, and it will upscale that with an integer algorithm. Now the integer algorithm is very fast and it's actually gonna have minimal performance impact on your game, which is pretty good. But since it is integer based, it is doing some brute forced math in order to blow up your image to that target resolution. Now, this isn't really beneficial with the Steam Deck because at a seven inch display and the small resolutions we're at to begin with, any fine image as you'll see in some of our video coming up, some of the detail gets lost in the upscale and some of it gets blown out of proportion, which due to the aliasing of the integer upscale, it could look pretty bad but it is gonna perform pretty well, and as we'll see in the videos coming up in just a second, uh, it's not a bad option either. Lastly, and most impressive is AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR. AMD had launched this to the world just this past summer, and its aim is to allow upscaling technology to a broad set of hardware with minimal impact and integration by the software developers. Now this is great for the Steam Deck because it's a bit more elegant than Gamescope's current offerings, and since it's open source, many people are available to develop for it, and it's really easy for developers to integrate. Though it's not as refined as DLSS, this option is a great fit for the Steam Deck, and it is a good opportunity to boost performance with minimal impact on visual quality. Now FSR comes in a couple of different varieties, and the first one, and the one I like the most, is actually built into the games themselves. Now, each developer has to enable this on their own end and actually deliver it through a game update, through any of the different launchers we have, and it's gonna actually inject the FSR algorithm into their render pipeline 
ultimately providing a more cleaner image and experience for the gamer. Now, the most exciting implementation of FSR is through the use of the Wine translation layer. With the latest versions of both Proton and Wine, we have the option of enabling full screen Wine FSR support, which injects the FSR algorithm towards the end of the render pipeline, ultimately upscaling using FSR, which should translate into a cleaner as well as a more refined image compared to integer upsampling. However, there are some drawbacks to this approach as we'll talk about shortly, but overall it's a one size fits all approach, which should ultimately be a great option for gamers. So to net that all out, by using upsampling technology with the Steam Deck, we should be able to at least boost our performance for some of these newer games up to more acceptable levels by only sacrificing just a little bit of visual quality. And depending on the game and its uh, compatibility, we should be able to use either of these options and get pretty good results. This sounds great and all, but does it actually work? I've covered upscaling technologies here on the channel quite a few times. I've covered uh, FSR versus DLSS in great detail when talking about dedicated graphics cards, and I've even touched on game scope when it comes to upscaling in docked mode for the Steam Deck for both 1080p and 4K gaming with some, you know, Hades types of games. But today we're going to be focusing strictly at 720p and focusing on the most demanding of AAA games. So let's see how much performance that we can buy back. The first game to play is Control, a popular testament to modern graphics technologies and games. Control favors a more cinematic experience with impressive shadows, reflections, and surfaces. There's no doubt that it will cripple the deck. Upon opening the options menu, internal scaling options are available, allowing us to use a couple of different 16 by 9 aspect ratio resolutions and a variety of internal rendering modes. When running the game at native render resolution, I'm hitting around 31 FPS on average at 720p in medium detail preset. Dialing down the internal resolution to 540p, I see a massive 42% performance improvement on average frame rate, bumping our 1% lows above 30 FPS. Though nowhere near 60 FPS, I'm pretty sure plenty of people here will enjoy the experience on the deck. Now let's take a look at the Wine FSR approach. Typing in Wine Full Screen FSR into our launch options, we can select a lower output resolution for Wine to upscale to our 720p resolution. Unfortunately for Control, with only one other 16x9 monitor resolution available, we're a bit limited and can't thoroughly test this approach. It does work and looks decent to boot, and overall, we see similar results as internal scaling. However, we do start to see 1% lows going just below 30 FPS, which would hint that FSR actually does take a little bit of extra headroom in order to do the calculations, but I bet most gamers probably won't tell the difference. Lastly, I don't think that GameScope is correctly working with control. I have a feeling that by having the two different options for the resolutions, GameScope for some reason is kind of uh, bugging out a bit within its own application. Fortunately though, Plagman as, as well as a bunch of other developers over at the GitHub project are actively contributing to the project, so if you guys are trying out GameScope, feel free to go and issue bug reports or feature requests, and hopefully they can get this kind of stuff resolved before the launch in February. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has become a staple in my Steam Deck testing, ranging from Proton versus native gameplay support, all the way to validating my performance leaks from across the net. Fortunately, all three upscaling options are available, so let's dive in. Internal scaling options provide a percentage basis for defining the render resolution, ranging from 20% to 100%. I see excellent scaling performance when using the built-in benchmark, and we managed to hit 60 FPS at medium detail settings, though the image does get a bit blurry. Gamescope's implementation works great for this game, though it still has a few issues to work through. I was able to test both 540p and 480p and managed to see excellent scaling, though capping out frame rate just above 50 FPS. I believe monitor resolutions that are below 480p are just not supported by the game and likely are going to need some intervention by the developer. A similar constraint is with the Wine full screen FSR approach. Just as we saw in Control, only one output resolution is available, 635p, and we only see a 4 FPS bump in improvement as Lara Croft journeys across the jungle. So here's our first direct comparison of methods with internal scaling running at 288p and GameScope running at 480p. 
Both approaches net a 53 FPS average gaming experience, so how do you guys think they look comparatively? Gamescope's integer scaling clearly shows aliasing across the image, but I admit, with a 7-inch screen, it is very difficult to see this difference, and in some instances, it actually looks sharper than the internally upscaled scene. Adding insult to injury, we have to sacrifice 60% of our render resolution just to match the performance of integer scaling, resulting in a blurrier image overall. Horizon Forbidden West releases in a little bit over a month, and there is a slew of gamers that are wanting to replay Horizon Zero Dawn just before the launch. And fortunately for us, all three different rendering modes are available to us, so we've got plenty of testing to do. Now the first thing I want to mention here is that with the latest update that enables the internal FSR as well as the DLSS option with NVIDIA graphics cards, there does appear to be some graphical glitching that's going on either through the game itself or Proton or FSR. I'm not exactly sure and there are reports over at ProtonDB.com that some people consider this game to be borked. However, since the game still runs and the developers are actively working on Proton as we get towards the release, I'm going to be looking past the graphical issues that we see and looking more towards the performance impact that all of the different upscaling technologies provide. Gamescope provides excellent scaling performance walking through each of the FSR quality mode scaling factors from 962p down to 640p. What's amazing here is we can hit nearly 60 FPS at the balanced mode, which actually looks pretty decent, though the aliasing is noticeable across the scene. Full screen FSR through Wine appears to match the same performance as Gamescope, though I must mention the confusion with this setting. When looking at a list of true 16x9 resolutions, many of the options that are presented in Horizon Zero Dawn, <laughs> they're not 16x9 resolutions. In fact, selecting the 16x9 aspect ratio doesn't appear to filter out the incompatible resolutions. However, 480p or 486p, what the option says, and 540p appear to be common resolutions in our comparison today. Now it's time to test the in-game FSR feature with resolutions matching the GameScope tested resolutions. Shaking things up a bit, we constantly see a 5 to 10 FPS dip compared to GameScope in Wine's implementation, though the clarity of Aloy's character model looks to be a bit sharper and more refined compared to either solution. But it's hard to compete with the performance improvements with both Wine and GameScope, especially considering that we lose additional quality with the in-game FSR to match that performance. Putting each solution side by side, can you guys even tell the difference? Definitely let me know down in the comments, because <laughs> truth be told, I can't tell the difference. When I'm looking at this through my 7-inch screen, all four look strikingly close, though the GameScope and Wine FSR solutions look and feel the best. So with the most demanding games coming across the horizon, hey, <laughs> see what I did there? I think that Steam Deck users can have a huge sigh of relief when it comes to playing these latest games. Granted, the GPU solution might not be up to spec for God of War or Final Fantasy Integrate or anything else that comes down the pipe. I think all of the different upsampling technologies available to the deck will hopefully keep it going for quite some time, especially when it comes to playing these AAA games. However, there are plenty of bugs in the system when it comes to all three approaches, but luckily we still have a couple more months until release, and the developers are actively engaged in GameScope, Proton, Wine, as well as, of course, the developers themselves. But this also begs the question of how do we actually <laughs> turn on these features within SteamOS 3? We don't have a good handle of how this happens, and all we have is the commitment from Valve that they will give us an open platform. So unless we get access to the web, the ter terminal command line, and access to the Arch AURs, it could take the community quite a bit of time to get all of these different upscaling technologies available. But given the performance we saw in this video, I know you guys are up to the challenge. And that's going to be my Steam Deck FSR video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what other games you guys want me testing in the future. As always, if you have questions about my Steam Deck setup itself, check out the playlist down in the description. I talk about the hardware, software, operating system, all that good stuff. So I'm going to be keeping you guys up to date on the Steam Deck news. And then next week, we're going to be talking about do we think that 30 FPS gaming is dead? Given the stuff we saw in today's video, it might not be. But thank you guys for watching the video. Turk Force, we'll catch you in the next one.